ADB has been resuming operations in Myanmar since 2013 with an assistance of the uh, package of social and economic development intending to alleviate poverty and foster growth. And then ADV implementing the interim country partnership strategy. I'd like to say that my sincere thanks to being with us to sit interview with Mizma Media. So what is the purpose of your visit to Myanmar at this time? Well, thank you for having me on your program. I'm very excited to be here today. Uh, and I spent yesterday in, in Napidal meeting with senior government officials uh, really to discuss uh, our country partnership strategy, which we have finalized with the government and will go to our board for their approval by the end of this month. And that country partnership strategy focuses on, on a partnership with the government of Myanmar ultimately to benefit the people of Myanmar through poverty reduction and economic growth. You met with the president of Myanmar in Nepido and you discussed about the key center of the agriculture. You discussed about the Expo investment, something like that. So how would you say about the agreements between ADV and the new government and what are your commitments from ADV side? Right. Well, I think our, our priorities are completely aligned and they're really expressed in, in the country partnership strategy, which has three basic pillars. And those pillars are, uh, are creating access and connectivity across the country, on strengthening human capital, and lastly, on promoting economic reforms that will help modernize the Myanmar economy. And these are very consistent with the messages that I received yesterday from the president and from the state councillor. In fact, they were very keen on making sure that, that they have significant investment in transport infrastructure as well as in electricity uh, and making sure that we have reliable electricity for many, many more people across the country. And they believe that those two infrastructure investments will help unlock uh, economic growth and help improve the challenges that so many rural people across the country face in terms of, of opportunity and in terms of income. Mm -hmm. What are the new key priorities of the ADV at the uh, present government, president, uh, present uh, administration? Well, our key priorities, again, are in those three basic pillars, and 85% of our program, which is about $400 million a year over the next five years, is really 85% of that is focused on infrastructure, so on transportation, on electricity and power, on, uh, on, on supporting uh, agricultural investment, um, and to a certain degree also in education and health and some other sectors, but also importantly, investments and, and policy advice that will help modernize the economy, undertake the kinds of structural reforms that are necessary to allow the Myanmar economy to compete uh, at an international level. Let's say about your Twitter post uh, yesterday. So uh, you described the positive works like uh, very productive, excellent, yes. uh, very helpful yes. with your individual meetings with the president of Myanmar State Councilor and the uh, minister, country minister. So. How would you say it about your positive, optimistic things after meeting with those the governments administrated? Well, I think we're very, very optimistic. I think we have an excellent partnership here in Myanmar. We, uh, we have a history of the last four years, uh, almost five years, of, of developing a common understanding of what the challenges uh, that the country faces and how support from institutions like the ADB can help the government address those challenges. And I think that in the current government you have people that are extremely dedicated to addressing these challenges and understand very well what the challenges are and are looking to partners like the Asian Development Bank to help provide the financial support that will allow them to undertake and invest in these priority areas to unlock the economic potential of the country, but also very importantly address the challenges on poverty that continue to plague many, many areas of the country. All right, Stephen, Myanmar prior to 2010 had suffered for half a century of what could be described as the economic mismanagement. And how do you view the challenges of the new government under the state councillor on Sansuji? 
Well, I think the challenges are, are, are there, there are very large challenges that the country faces, but at the same time, there's real potential in this economy. I think if you look at the geographic location that Myanmar occupies between South Asia, between Southeast Asia and East Asia, that there, where there's huge amounts of growth and economic opportunity, Myanmar is right in the middle of all that. Myanmar has a young uh, population that is, uh, that, is, that is, and a lot of these other countries have aging populations. So there's a lot of opportunity that exists within this economy, natural resource base that's very extensive, agriculture production which can be, can be, productivity can be enhanced and improved to supply neighboring countries with agricultural products and produce that will help drive this economy further. So there's a lot of potential in this country and it's just a matter of, of good economic policy that will help unlock that potential. And we believe that this government is committed to seeing that through. Okay, Stephen, you are uh, responsible for a full range of the countries in Asia. How do the challenges in Myanmar differ compared with the other countries? How would you say about that? Well, I think in many ways every single country is unique and they possess you know, unique features that create specific challenges and whether those be related to uh, geographic constraints or whether they related to some countries are landlocked, other countries are not landlocked, some countries are archipelagic, meaning that they have to, they're not connected all by roads, they have to be connected by ferries or, or, or maritime transport. So each country has its own set of challenges. And so Myanmar certainly has its set of challenges, but it also has a real opportunity in the fact that because you've seen delayed development in this country over the last half of a century, it can look to neighboring countries and learn lessons from mistakes or, 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 or positive lessons from good decisions that these countries have made, which will allow them to leapfrog their development. So I think it, it's really a unique point in time for this country that positions it very well to, to, to take advantage of these opportunities. Uh, according to the statistic of the ADV, uh, 25 point six, more than 25 uh, percent of the Myanmar population lives. They lie with the uh, poverty, and the most of the people who lives in the rural area, as including in the agricultural sector. So, how do you view how Myanmar could agree its agriculture sector and uh, value added into the system? Right. Well, part of that is going to be, as I said, investment in infrastructure because you need farm-to-market roads, you need proper modern irrigation uh, systems and techniques, and also you need to make sure that there are storage facilities and post-harvest facilities and agro-processing facilities that are in place that will improve the productivity that it ultimately means that farmers and people in rural areas will have more cash, they'll have more money uh, which they can use to finance education, can use to finance the health, they can use to uh, finance consumption. So I think looking at this from a comprehensive uh, perspective and thinking about again providing much more rural, much more reliable electricity supply, which again will help spur economic growth, are very much the way that you can help modernize that agriculture sector. Because you're right, it contributes almost 40 percent of GDP for the economy, and more than 50 percent of employment is in the rural sector. So it's an important focus, and I think this government is focused on that, and that's the right, uh, right focus. When the president of the ADB. Uh, Takehi Nagao came to Myanmar in the mid-2016. So he told media uh, to give Myanmar uh, between 150 to 350 US dollar millions starting from this year. So how is going on, the, what is the proceeding uh, in uh, the new government at the, at this year? So how would you say it about that? And I would like to know about the what commitments, so where the added to the, your, your trip to Myanmar? Well, I think that indeed we're very much on track for that commitment, that we are, we are setting aside about $400 million a year of, of, our, of our finance to, to invest in, in, in Myanmar. So we're very much on track to the commitment that President Nakao made when he visited last year. Uh, as far as what this visit does to help move that along, is that we've articulated this new country partnership strategy, which as I said, will go to our board uh, at, at the end of this month. And so this was a really good time of vis to visit, to have, have final discussions on, on the direction of that partnership strategy, number one. Number two, 
we also focused a lot of our discussions on implementation of the existing set of projects that have already been approved and are, are underway because it's not just the commitment of additional finance that's important, but it's also actual execution and implementation of the set of projects and programs that exist now. And so trying to smooth out the implementation and making sure that that's going well is critically important to address the, the real challenges that this economy faces. So how would you say that how do you build the credit gap the priorities of the Myanmar. What does government need to uh, do? Which areas in agriculture or infrastructure or education or vocation? So I think if you look at, 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 at the needs of this economy going forward and making sure that you can continue on the same trajectory of economic growth, a focus on, on, on the rural sector is critically important because that's where a majority of, of, of employment resides. I think looking at, at skills and making sure that you have graduates from, from secondary school uh, and from uh, technical and vocational education as well as tertiary and university education, that they have sets of skills that are useful to the, to the job market is, is critically important. And then lastly, I think reliable electricity and power supply. This is absolutely critical to the private sector. Uh, in order that they can continue to be a source of growth, but equally importantly, a source of employment and jobs. So these areas, inf you know, uh, rural sector, infrastructure, education, and, and, and energy and power supply are critically important. And, and I think these are focuses of this, of this government and focuses that we c completely support. So can you tell us the uh, detailed investment amount to each sector, to the government? Well, that's, that's currently under discussion because each year we have a rolling three-year program and that three-year program is available on our website so the details of the individual projects and programs can be found there. But it's something that is adjusted from year to year. So one year there may be more money in one sector than another, but that is made up over the period of time. And, and so f you can find that information on our website and the details of it on the website. So it is the end of discussion with the government? Yes. So next three years? Yes.